Okay, so uh, today, right, we'll just do this part, uh, which is on encoder and decoder models in RNN. These are important because most of the applications, right, in RNN come under this this category, what are called encoder and decoder models. And the idea is that, right, you have uh, so when you say encoder decoder, right, what, it, what it really means is that uh, is that you have uh, you watch for your entire input. So the input could be, you know, it can be whatever. You know, it can be a text. It can be image. It can be text and image. Uh, whatever it is, right? And that you watch, you know, completely, and then have a sort of a representation, which is an internal internal feature representation for that, which you then get as you pass on to a decoder. The decoder in turn can be an RNN again or the decoder can be a simple MLP depending upon the final task on hand. And these two together, right, act in a manner that uh, depending upon what task you have, right, it can be solved. And that is why, they, that's why right, these are called encoder, encoder decoder models. And many of the applications that have emerged uh, you know, within, the, within the realm of RNN uh, actually fall under this. So the best way to understand is to actually take an example. Okay, so what I thought is I will take an example just to illustrate the point. Okay, so we, this is one example of an encoder decoder model. Uh, so, which is so an example case is image captioning. Okay, we have we have of course referred to it multiple times earlier, but now but now we will watch it in a sort of a more more careful manner. And the idea would be that right, tomorrow if somebody gives you a different problem, right, you should automatically be able to figure out how that encoder decoder or how will it fit, I mean if it fits into this kind of a, uh, right, this kind of a kind of an architecture then how will that architecture be, right. That is something that I think should be easy for you to, for you to be able to do, okay. So we will take an example, so image captioning. So as we know, right, what goes as input is actually an image and then what should come out is actually a caption. So which is like a sentence, right, that should come out. So as far as the image is concerned, so what will be the D and the encoder and what will be a decoder here? See, I have to I have to do image captioning, right? Uh, so I have an image and I want uh, I want a caption for it. All this of course has to be trained and all that, right? I mean we are not worried about that. Training at all will happen, let's say. But what will be the what will what will be the encoder's job in this case? It should take the image and then actually uh, right, uh, no, and from the image it should be able to draw out you know, a visual feature out of that image, right. And, and like I said, you know, generally you do not just pass the image, typically it will be some, you know, feature, right, that kind of characterizes the image, uh, depending upon, it could be like FC7 layer in an AlexNet, whatever it is, right. And the decoder in this case, right, you want a sentence to come out. So the, so the appropriate architecture, right, so the, for the input, for the encoder part, it looks like a CNN is appropriate, right, you do not need an RNN for that. You have an image and and you want to kind of uh, extract, you know, features out of it, which will be a visual features. And those features have to be sent to, uh, you know, a decoder. And the decoder's job is to actually look at this visual, look at these visual features as a whole and sort of come out with a sentence, uh, which of course it will be trained to do that, right? It can't do it on its own. And uh, and that output, right, you will, you will, you will of course, you know, tend to, uh, you know, agree that that has to be an RNN then, right, because it has to produce word by word, it has to go and produce a sentence, right. Similarly, if you, if I give you another problem, like for example, suppose I told you that you have to do action recognition, right, given a video. Let us say there are multiple actions that are there and I want to produce, I mean, I want to do that problem. What will be the encoder decoder model? Suppose you have to do activity recognition, right? I mean, all this, many of these will come under this kind of a framework, you know, encoder and then decoder. So, what will be the encoder? What will be the encoder's job? I mean, what kind of an architecture do you suspect you will need for the encoder now? See, activity means what? It has to be some kind of a video, right? I mean, from one image, it's typically very hard to tell any activity. Typically, activity means there is something that you are watching, okay? And it's typically and typically a video. So that's your that's the input that you have, and at the output rate you are asking for what is that activity? Right? Is somebody drinking or is somebody whatever? Is sleeping? Okay. Typically, there are some you know, you know each data set will have some actions that it wants to classify. 
So what, uh, so what do you think will be the encoder? Encoder will be an RNN, right? Because it has to watch frame by frame, frame by frame, and then it has to summarize all of that, right? I mean, it has to watch all of that, and then and then it come up, come up with some, say, summary feature, which will then be passed on, because you can't make out an activity by just looking at one frame, right? You have to watch the whole video, and then what will be a decoder now? Decoder will be a simple MLP, right? Because all that it has to do is classification, right? I mean, you have some n number of classes, it needs to tell which of those actions it is, right? So again, so worried where the RNN will come in or how it will come in, right? It is all a function of uh, what problem we want to solve, okay? So in this case, clearly, you have an image that is going in, okay? Therefore, it I'll just, I'll just write down, I'll just draw the architecture and you know, it will be obvious that that's how it ought to be, right? So you have an image, right? That you have as input. Then you look at of push it through a CNN and then out comes a feature. Let us call this as S0. This S0 could be something like an FC7, okay, of that image, whatever, right, some feature representation. Then this sort of a summary feature will then go and uh, the and then the H0, right, which is the initial state of your RNN, which is supposed to produce. In this case, what it has to produce a sentence, right? So it will it will take this input, which is the which is the image input, and then the other input that it will come is I think the other day somebody was asking, I think he was asking, right? So what is called a token. So you have to say go, right? That means you start, you start now, right? Start kind of right throwing out the words, you know. So, so it needs to kind of say spit out one word after another. So typically, right, this will be a woman. So this will be like go, and this is a token that is that is understood. It's actually a, you know a part of a part of your what is called a vocabulary, right? So you have uh, this one vocabulary of words in which stop and and go or start whatever you want to say, right? That will be that will also be a part of the this one. So this we can say it's a kind of see it's a kind of a special word, right? It's a special word in the vocabulary. In the vocabulary. Okay, and suppose let's say suppose let's say you now the caption is such that let's say something right the cat sat on the bench or something right the cat is sitting on the bench or something cat sat on the bench. Okay, if this is the caption right that is supposed to be output, then what it means is right that this guy takes it and all those those things will happen right in terms in the sense that this is not will have to be acted upon by some by some weight vector weight matrix. And then this input right will then have to be operated by some weight matrix here, U, W, whatever we said, right? Of course, sometimes right people differentiate the Ws that come later. For example, after this also right, you're going to have this going to H1 and so on, right? Now that is what we refer to as W. So this they will say as the one that's coming in here, right? This will be called a W conf because that's a weight matrix coming from a convolution kind of an output, right? So CNN. Whereas these are all part of the RNN, so the W, so they don't have to be the same. Right. So, you will typically say WW for the rest and for the initial one you might say there is a W con or something. And right, so the first one could be like, could be, could be like right, say a probability of the, right, that is what, that is what is my, that is what is my first word, right, that I want. And the second input, right, that, that needs to go here, right, will be, will be typically the word, see, ideally you would want the to come out. But, but right, we do not know, we, we do not know for certain whether right, it is going to, it is going to throw out, you know, the word uh, the, but whatever is this word, so, so at the output, right, you have a cross entropy loss now, right, when, because, because you, you are kind of, right, expecting a certain sort of, you know, one heart, this one representation to come out and uh, the input that goes in, right, here is not something that is going to come from elsewhere because I have only that image, right, so, so, so this input, right, in a sense will come from here whatever was that word, right, that was spit out, it is word to vec representation, right. So, that is what I said last time, right, there is always a word to vec representation. So, that word to vec, vec kind of say representation will go as the, as the, you know, ini, as the input for the, I mean, next state. And the next state will, of course, you know, draw from H0 also, because H0 has a history of the image, right. I mean, it has a visual feature. So, all these, uh, so here are your, you see, visual features, right, so that you have extracted from the image. So your visual features could be in terms of you know whatever there is a cat laying there. It's all that all that has to be going to see captured right within that is a visual feature, and this H1 right will actually take whatever was the whatever was the previous output and then and then right, it is supposed to spit out let's say cat right. So it'll say cat given whatever right given the past output and if 
and then that will in turn right go and then then you will have the H2 and then and then right, you will have probably cat sat whatever right given that whatever whatever it occurred earlier and so on right? and that way it will go until you hit a stop uh, stop token right? at which time it will stop it right? is something like this. So, so here right you see that this part is the encoder part right that is the encoder part and this part is actually a decoder part and in this case the encoder happens to be a CNN and the decoder happens to be an RNN. And in terms of the actual actual equations, right? If you look at it, we have to kind okay, of look at a loss now. Let's say theta, and this theta, of course, other than the bias, right? What you'll have is a W. Okay, so it'll be all this the set of these matrices. One is a W conf, which is from here, right? From okay, so from from here to here, in going from here to here, right? I mean, you need a matrix that will then take that and right and send it to H naught. Then you will have a the u v w that are normally there sometimes you write them explicitly as u d w d v d just to represent that they are actually decoder they are coming from the you know decoder side. So, you might say u d w d v d just to emphasize the fact that these are all on the say, decoder side because on the encoder side you do not need anything and and some bias here and there right, that you might need ok. So, so L theta right if you look at it this will be like summation over whatever right, t equal to 1 to t the I mean, number of words and again this will go example example by example wise right during training you will have different different images that you have to give for which you have the caption. So, when you train that is how you will train. So, when this when you say t equal to 1 to t so that is this cost right that is going to happen and as I said this is will unroll right the same network will keep on unrolling and depending upon adjust so depending upon the length of the sentence it will keep uh, adjusting itself right. So, so we can accommodate varying sizes not a problem right it does not mean that all sentences have to be the same length and so on they do not have to be and this will keep unrolling accordingly and uh, and you will have a cross entropy loss if that is what you are looking at then you will have a cross entropy loss which you will represent as is LTF theta and uh, and this and this LTF theta right in turn right what will what will that look like right. So, so that so the idea is that right you want to be able to kind of uh, well I mean right if you want to solve it as a minimization ok. So, let us see right. So, what you really want is probability that let us say depending upon what we represent this is let us say the output right that is kind of coming out suppose we call that as y hat at uh, ok this is at t plus ok at any po any t right suppose we represent that as y hat of t then what you are saying is prob probability that y hat of t is equal to the is equal to the say, true word right in a sense right? because we know that what we actually want there we know that ok. We know that for example, here here right, I know that the output should be a cat right that should that is what should get flagged. So, uh, so y hat of t is true word right given that given the past y hat t minus 1 and uh, the image i f and that is what that is what is the that is what is the or or in general right you can simply ok you can simply say x t or or you can say i f right does not really matter. And this right in turn because of the fact that and one more right, one more thing that you will find is that typically ok. Uh, I typically right you will find that you know people will write H t to be R n n of H t minus 1 comma X t ok. That means, at any at any instant of time right if you are looking at uh, the hidden state vector right, that is coming out of the R n n network wherein the R n n itself right is really dependent upon what it actually receives as a, as a kind of a previous uh, this one right a state uh, hidden state and the current input x t that is how it is no? at, um, at any point of time you have a current input which in this case incidentally happens to be the previous output does not always have to be like that, but in this case right, that is how that is how it turns out to be. And then you have a previous state which is in a sense summarizing whatever has happened before right in way back into the past. And in a sense right you can actually write this down as y hat of t ok all this right is equal to you know true word and all of that. And uh, the, the best uh, right the succinct way to write it it is as follows. So, you can just write this as so h t right that is fine ok and this x t ok right, there is something else that I should I should not forget to mention. When you say x t right this uh, you will typically see that you know people will write this as you know e of uh, e of uh, ok in this case right I will write this as e of y hat t minus 1. Okay, what does E means? It's an it's an actually embedding. Okay, it's an embedding. That's like word to vec or something. It's a word embedding of 
in this case xt is like you know the previous output right y hat of t minus 1. So, it is a word embedding of y hat of t minus 1 for this network right I am writing this in general you can write this, uh, but for the specific case xt takes up uh, not takes up the form that it is an embedding of the previous output previous word which is y hat of t minus 1 and uh, and this one right. So, this lt of theta itself right you can write this if you are solving it as a minimization typically whenever you call say something as a loss right you want it to be minimized right nobody says maximize a loss right. I mean you may say right. So, that is why we will always introduce a minus log or something because ideally you want to get a maximize this probability right you want to you want to maximize the probability that y hat of t hits the correct word right that means these parameters of this network should be such that if I give if I put those parameters into this network then the probability that y hat of t takes up the correct word right is higher it is the highest right in a sense. And uh, minimization will mean that you just take minus log right that just uh, that is just a matter of writing everything as I see minimization. So, this further right you can just write it as y hat of t uh, and then ok yeah, y hat of I mean say I am kind of you know uh, they are all the same ok y hat of bracket t is the same as y hat subscript t and all that ok. Sometimes I think I am changing that notation ok and you can say that this in fact you can write this as h t comma let us say in this case I will write this as f c 7 of i f in this case ok does not. So, this can keep changing ok depending upon what network you use and y hat of t minus 1 in fact right because h of t is anyway capturing all of the past information. So, I so, so the so the equivalent way to kind of write it is simply this is the same as right uh, trying to minimize l t of theta which is minus log of and uh, and and uh, and right this 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 itself right I mean you know p of y of t is but soft max of what will that be the final output in terms of h t in some v h t plus some bias right last time we saw no the final output right has to come see the, the output the output will not just will not just will not just come off here right it has to go through a v matrix right there is another v that is acting on that h t right. So, this is in fact soft max of v h t plus some whatever bias right I mean, this is ok right that is what that is what it will be right. So, so this probability is equivalent to having a soft max function sitting there right. So, this is how this is how this is how right effectively it will turn out to be and uh, and and solving this problem is equivalently having a back propagation through time that will take example after example after example for which the captions are already available and you can you kind of keep on training this such that uh, at the end of the training right you get get a decent sort of a score. Now, th there are there are certain metrics right that go with uh, actually computing the accuracy of uh, you know of how well uh, words are reproduced and so on we will not actually go into that, but at a simple level right this is what this how it looks. Now, let me take one more example and then right, that will actually make make matters even more clear. So, the other one is query based the second example right that you know, because this is something that uh, you know because we are not doing auto encoders and all right. So, in this course so I thought at least a good idea of this will be uh, I mean we can kind of say register in your head. So, a query based image captioning this is also image captioning, but now it is kind of a, a query based image captioning. So, what do you what do you think it might be query based image captioning? What do you think might be the might be the input for this? So, you have an image right and there is a query on that image that means let us say I want to say what is what is a boy wearing ok that is a query. So, I also I also give this network an image I also give it a I give it a question what what is the and then the output can be just you know one word it can be like you know what is a boy wearing or you know whatever uh, you know what is the color of the shirt you will say brown or whatever right. And uh, so, so in such a case right again this goes into some encoder decoder kind of an architectural model where what do you think the, the, the encoder will be like now. you have an image and then you also have a sentence going along with it right. I mean you need both. So, you need an encoder that should capture features coming out of the right the image visual uh, the visual feature as well as the textual feature right both you need ok. So, what would you do? Huh? 
Yeah, exactly, right. So, you need a CNN to capture the visual features coming out of the image and then you need an RNN that would actually, right, pull out the, pull out the features coming out of the sentence and then typically what you will do is you will do a concatenation. I mean, that is, that is the simplest way to kind of push the, push the uh, total feature vector inside. I mean, you can of course, you know, think of other ways, but that is the most standard way, the easiest way even not just for text, right, even let us say, right, when it comes, in fact, uh, this is an open problem, you know, in the sense that uh, suppose you suppose you wanted to combine right video with audio right think of a situation where let's say uh, where let's say you are you are kind of navigating from one point to another well, on the one hand i have i have i have a video right i see that i see my scene in front of me but then with that right i might be able to navigate to a certain extent but let's say there is an audio that i have in the sense that i have as i mean i have something that i can send out as an echo right and then you know it, it comes in and bounces off the various objects and then it comes back to me now, if the whole idea is what I need to know what is where, right, in order for me to navigate, I should not run and, you know, run into something that is an obstacle. So, you need some kind of a depth map for that, right, so that I know I navigate properly. Now, you can ask, right, what is the best way to combine this audio feature that is coming, which is also, you know, which is also carrying information about the scene. Uh, for example, right, if I had just my eyes closed, right, this audio will still help me in some sense, right, that maybe something is coming from this direction, from that direction, I get a sense of what is happening. And then vision, of course, it right, will give you information. Now, what is the what is the best way to kind of you know where should this audio come in? These are all open questions, and right? nobody knows. For example, you build a network with just just a vision as input. You may get something. Now you say that I have the audio. Now you know at, at what layer, right? Should it come right in the input? Should it come somewhere down the line? Right? These are all open questions. No, nobody knows. But simplest way is people will just concatenate, and that's the way it is normally done. But I. But Right, uh, but uh, right, nobody can claim that that is the best way to do it right? and uh, it is not easy to tell as to when it should come in and that is where people do uh, different different kinds of studies to figure these kind of things out, but I do not think there are very good answers for that right as yet. Okay, So, this query based image uh, right uh, captioning will be something like that. So, for example, right, I have this image right for which uh, again I can use a CNN and this becomes let us say. Uh, Okay, and then there is some we say W con here, and I call this feature as as HI. Okay, this is a, this is a visual feature, and and I need to I need to read the whole sentence, right? I do not know what is being asked. So what I'll do is I have uh, I have this whatever this whole sentence, right? What is okay in this case? What I'm asking is what is what is the color, what is the bird's color, okay, something like that, okay, what is the something, okay, the bird's color, blah, 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 birds, okay, the is in between, what is the bird's color, I mean, I do not know what I saved by not writing that, what is the bird's color, okay. So, the final feature that comes out of it is some, is some HT which is a textual feature, so I is a vision or image feature. And what is done is, and this guy will go here and then it you have, okay, so this goes and you will kind of do a concatenation, okay, these are, this is called a concatenated features. Where did you see a concatenation before? In which architecture was that? Hmm? AlexNet, DenseNet. Yeah. I mean, do, do you remember? I mean, there I had said that you would you would you would have a skip connection, right? Going from going from every input to every other output, and you go and get a say, concatenate, right? So this concatenation is something that will keep on encountering. Here, of course, it's a concatenation of a different kind. You have audio, you have a textual feature. Sorry, you have a textual feature, right? This one, the textual feature, and then after this, right, you can just have a simple MLP. Right, and then out comes the class. So here, right, you have class in the sense that the color or whatever, right, which you are talking about. So you may say that, right, uh, there is brown or something from a set of colors. Right. Now, yeah. So I think, right, uh, right. This, in a sense, gives you an idea about how this RNN, right, is actually effective and uh, how it can be coupled with whatever you have learned before. See, right. So, so, 
the idea why I wanted to present this was because this kind of brings all of them in under one roof. MLP you learned, right? So, MLP anyway is also part of RNN in any case. And then CNN you learned, but then again, that is not really a standalone now, right? You can have applications that all are coming together. The RNN idea is there, the MLP idea is there, the CNN idea is there, and they are all coming together in order to solve a problem. Okay, now, right, there is just one more thing, right, which, which, uh, which is kind of the last thing, right, which I wanted to talk about. That is, uh, that is the that is this uh, kind of a vanishing gradient problem, right? Of course, you know I know that I know that we haven't talked about it uh, about it in any sort of a great detail, but I but I did mention that in an RNN, right? Huh, so in an RNN, for you to be able to carry on information, for example, right, I told you that uh, told you that the history, right? Sometimes, for example, if you are summarizing something, like the simplest example that you can give is a movie, right? So when you are summarizing the review for uh, for actually a movie. Right, then you are watching for say, sentiments and so on, right? I mean, how you are saying so, 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 right? So let's say somebody says, it right, starts with saying by saying that uh, the this entire movie sucks, and then after that, whatever he writes, right? That that sucks is something right, that you want to take in, right? Because I mean, initially it is declared that, that it's a it's a bad movie, right? But after that, you know, if he writes, you know, flowery words, glorifying and all, but you still don't want to accept that because you began by saying something. But you see, question is. That information right, should not vanish down the line right? because you know the fellow could write a long review and uh, that he said uh, right, right, something bad about the movie in the beginning would have gotten forgotten by the time by the time you are kind of you know ending up ending up you know reviewing the movie right. So, what so this vanishing gradient problem is actually a, is actually a real problem that is there in all architectures and more so in RN. Okay. Now and and it's impossible. To, no, no, one way to sort of right, you know, right, do it is to simply say that you know you should only we should only look into a finite past. Don't go don't go too far into the past. But but then right, that's not that's not a good way to do things. I mean, you shouldn't be truncating because you don't know when and where things are relevant. 